Hey guys, and welcome to our last math video. So in this video, we're going to cover trig, logic, and patterns. So all of the things that we're learning now are going to be individually smaller amounts of points, and some of the bigger topics like, for instance, equations, which equate to quite a number of questions on the test. Um, so we're looking at things like trig, where you have four questions on each test. Um, likewise, you know, logic questions, there won't be that many individually. And then patterns is going to be split up into several different types of questions, each of which you'll see like one to maybe three. Um, so we're dealing with kind of our, our smaller uh, topics now, but that doesn't mean they're not important because if you're going to be a high test score, you need to be able to master all of the topics. All right, so let's go ahead and let's start up with trig. Okay, so one of the great things about trig is that there are always four questions. So four questions. Uh, so you can pretty much predict what sorts of things you're going to see on the test, and there's going to be four out of your 60 questions covering trig. The most basic thing that you need to know for trig um, would be sine, cosine, and tangent, and you can remember them using so ka toa. Okay, so what that means is sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So if we were to draw a triangle and say, uh, let's go ahead and say that this is A, this is B, and this is C, so we're using, you know, Pythagorean theorem there, and let's choose this as theta. So if we're trying to figure out what the sine, cosine, tangent is, we can do that pretty easily. So we would say uh, sine of theta. We have theta and we want the opposite, so that would be A, and then over the hypotenuse, which is C. Then cosine of theta would be our adjacent, so B is closest, so B is your adjacent over your hypotenuse, which again is C, and then tangent of theta would equal your opposite, A, over your adjacent, B. So obviously they would probably fill in for the, you know, A, B, and C, or for theta, but that's how you would basically figure things out. Okay. You also need to know cosecant, secant, and cotangent although they're less important than your three kind of basic ones. So cosecant is one over sine, so you just have to flip. So we had A over C, so we would now have C over A. And then uh, secant is one over cosine, so since we had B over C, we'd have C over B. And then cotangent was A over B, so we would flip that and say B over A. All right, the next thing that you do need to know is uh, the classic equations. So classic equations, we'll go ahead and put them boop, at the bottom of the page. Okay, so there's two equations that you're going to need to know. Um, so the first one you've got sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So that's going to come in very, very handy when you have a long equation with lots of sines, lots of cosines, and they're telling you to simplify it. And if you look at the answers, you're going to have numbers in there. So it could potentially say, let's say an answer choice is 2 plus uh, tangent theta. Okay, so the way that they got that 2 would probably be that they had 2 times sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. So there's a bunch of sines, a bunch of cos uh, cosines, especially if you get to multiply them together and therefore square them. Um, you're going to use that first equation because you're going to be able to simplify it in numbers. Then the second one, um, sine of angle A, the big capital letters are angles, the uh, lowercase ones are side. So sine of angle A over side A equals sine of B over B equals sine of C over C. So just like uh, the part, part over whole uh, equations that we looked at when we were dealing with circles, if you have an angle and a side, and you know what sine of that angle is, then you could find what your other sides are equal to and your other angles as well. Okay, a uh, very last thing that you have to know 
before we go ahead and we actually look at a, a problem would be how to change from degree to radian. So first off, you can do it in your calculator and make sure, it's actually really good uh, good thing to make sure of, make sure that uh, you know what mode your calculator is in when you go on to the test because you don't want to mix it up and not get the right answers. But uh, let's say that you were doing this manually. All you'd have to say is degree, so whatever the degree measure is, over 180 degrees. And that is going to equal your uh, radian measure over pi. So you just cross multiply. So if you have the degrees, divide by 180, and then you'd multiply by pi to get your radians, and then vice versa. Okay, so a lot of stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and do a practice problem so that we can make sure that all of this makes sense when we apply it in the real world. Okay, so here's a problem. So uh, you have a triangle, triangle ABC, and you know its hypotenuse is 16. It tells you the sine of angle A is 3 over 5, and it's asking what the length of CB is equal to. So um, this, is, this is a good problem because it's not going to actually come out with a whole number, uh, because 16 and 5 are not divisible by each other, um, but that's that's good because this is something that's it's nice to get used to. So uh, if it tells us that sine of a, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in so we see it, is equal to 3 over 5. If we remember the SOHCAHTOA, uh, then we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite, opposite, uh, is CB, which is what we're looking for, over the hypotenuse. So we know that sine of A is equal to our opposite, X over 16. And they also told us that sine of A is 3 over 5. So we can go ahead and put that in, and then all we're doing is cross multiplying. So if we're cross multiplying, we would get 5 times X is equal to 3 times 16. Um, and then once we write that out, we're dividing by 5. So if only the side of the equation had something like 50, uh, we would get an even answer. But we're not going to, and that's okay. So when you divide 48 by 5, you're going to end up getting 9.6. So that would be our answer. And notice... Totally normal ACT problem doesn't give you a whole number answer. Uh, that, that'll happen sometimes. Okay. Okay, here's another trig problem. So a lot of times, um, if they're going to give you some kind of more complicated trig identities, they'll actually tell you what they are in the problem, so you don't have to memorize and try to figure out yourself. Um, Obviously, if you have them memorized, great bonus points. It'll be easier for you to, you know, be familiar with it. So here's our problem. We're looking for the sine of pi over 12, and it tells us that pi over 12 is equal to pi over 3 minus pi over 4, and it gives us this identity. So sine of a minus b is equal to sine a cosine b minus cosine a times sine b. And then it gives us a table that tells us, at any given theta, three options. What is the sine of that theta? What is the cosine of that theta? So all we have to do, this is basically like a, a giant trig symbol problem. All we're doing is reading directions and then filling in. So we know that sine of pi over 12 is the same as sine of a minus b. So we're going to just plug in to this second part. So if we're looking at our a and our b, um, we know that a is pi over 3 and b is pi over 4. So all we're doing is just sticking in pi over 3 and pi over 4 into our equation. So the first thing is sine of pi over 3. So we would look over here and say pi over 3. Sine of pi over 3 is radical 3 over 2. So that's our first part. So we've checked off that. Okay, times, now we have to do cosine of b. So cosine of pi over 4. Let's go ahead and look at pi over 4. All right, so it tells us in our table that it's radical 2 over 2. 
Okay, so we've got that second part. Now we're going to have to say minus cosine of a, so cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half times sine of b, so sine of pi over 4, which is radical 2 over 2. Okay, great. So now we're just going to try to simplify this a little bit. So we end up with radical 6 over 4 minus radical 2 over 4. So if we're trying to combine that, all we'd have to do is just put that into one fraction. So radical 6 minus radical 2 all over 4. And that would serve as our answer. So it looks like a really complicated problem, and in some ways it is. But what you have to do to make it a little more simple for yourself is just realize that basically you're just filling in information. So use the table to your advantage and just fill in information. Okay, so that's about as, as messy as the trig problems really look. Uh, let's go ahead and move on.